I now give the floor to His Excellency uh, Alexander Schallenberg, uh, Federal Minister for, Europe, for European and International Affairs of Austria. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is good to be back here in New York. It's good to be back in this hall. Flying here to attend the opening of the General Assembly is something that once seemed like a routine undertaking. But this past year has made it something very special again, a sign that things are finally moving in the right direction. And we all know that the pandemic is not yet in our rear view mirror, that the world is slowly finding its footing, one vaccination at a time. And yet, we already know that some things have fundamentally changed. The virus has brutally exposed our fragility, the fragility of our social fabric, of our health systems, of our economies, and of our lives. The virus destroyed our illusion that human progress is a one-way street. 124 million people went from being poor to needing to fight for the very survival, while millions more don't even know where the next meal will come from. Over 250 million people lost their jobs and are without a paycheck to support their families. In the blink of an eye, we lost decades of hard and development gains. And we will lose even more if we cannot ensure that everyone who has, has access to the vaccine as soon as possible. This is our only exit ticket out of this pandemic. And that is why COVAX is probably the, one of the most important initiatives of our time. It has so far shipped over 300 million vaccine doses to 142 countries. And as part of Team Europe, Austria is among the lead contributors to COVAX. We were the first country providing our neighborhood, the Western Balkans, with much needed doses through the EU vaccine sharing mechanism. Austria has donated over 2 million doses bilaterally to our partners from Georgia, Lebanon, Tunisia, Ukraine, and Iran. And as host of the UN headquarters in Vienna, we spared no effort in keeping UN personnel and their families safe, including through vaccination. However, an enormous task still lies ahead of us. We have to massively accelerate the international vaccine distribution. And it's perfectly clear, and we all know it, in this pandemic, no one is safe until everyone is safe. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 has added fuel to the fire of existing geopolitical tensions. A ring of crises and conflicts spawns the globe. In Yemen and Syria, where many children have known nothing but conflict and deprivation. In Ethiopia and nagorno karabakh where long-standing fault lines have erupted. Or in Belarus, in Myanmar, or Nicaragua, where some have used the pandemic as a carte blanche to ignore human rights and fundamental freedoms. We have to send to all of them a very clear message. The message that our fight for human rights and our engagement for fundamental freedoms know no lockdown. This fight, this engagement, was never an easy and straightforward task. It is a continuous battle marked by progress, but also by bitter setbacks. How demanding and problematic this struggle can be became clear again in Afghanistan. After 20 years of engagement, it seems that we are now back at square one. It seems that much of the social, political, and economic progress is slipping through our fingers like sand. We are all faced with the same question. What shall we do now? From my perspective, the answer is very clear. 
we cannot turn our back to the people of Afghanistan. The consequences would be felt immediately, above all, by the millions of women and girls, by the human rights defenders, and by the minorities who face an uncertain future. We have to remain engaged, and we have to offer the urgently needed humanitarian aid. That is why Austria will provide a total of 20 million euro in humanitarian emergency aid to Afghanistan and to the region. But we also have to spell out very clearly our expectations to the new ruling power in Kabul. There can be no blank checks for the Taliban. Fundamental rights and freedoms, in particular for women and girls, are simply non-negotiable. We have to do everything to prevent Afghanistan from turning into a black hole with the capacity to destabilize the whole region. And we have to drive home the message to the Taliban that the world's eyes are on them. We don't want Afghanistan to turn into an incubator or a safe haven for terrorism and extremism. This requires a coordinated international effort and a coordinated messaging. And I strongly believe that in particular, the immediate neighbors and other Muslim countries can and should play a central role in this endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, some gleefully describe Afghanistan as a failure of the so-called West, as a proof of the inevitable decline of our democratic system of governance, as a breakdown of our values. And it is true, Afghanistan holds many bitter lessons, lessons we, ne we need to take to heart. But from my perspective, one, th is, one thing is crystal clear. We should not fall into defeatism, into self-doubt, into despair. Our answer cannot lie in a cynical inward turning away from our partners and allies. The days of a moral gunboat policy may be over, but the values that the free world fought and stood for in Afghanistan, and for which we stand and fight in so many other places around the world, these values continue to be the right ones. They were the ones, and they are the ones, that give individuals freedom, to give them the capacity to live up to their potential. Rationalism, rule of law, equality, human rights, and liberal democracy. In the end, ladies and gentlemen, it boils down to one question, how we want to live. And as a strong believer in the democratic system, my answer is clear and simple. I want to live in a world, and I want my children and my future grandchildren to grow up in the world where the freedom of expression, the freedom of, relief, of belief and religion, the freedom of assembly and the rights of minorities are not just noble sentiments, but an everyday reality. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has brought home to us the simple truth of how interconnected and interdependent we all are. We have learned the hard way that we cannot overcome a challenge like this one on our own. Despite forcing us into social distancing, this pandemic brought us closer together as a human family. Let us use this lesson to tackle the next crisis that is actually already upon us. Compared to the COVID-19 pandemic, which burst into our lives like an explosion, this one is like a slow-burning, smoldering fire creeping up on us. I'm obviously talking about climate change. Austria will continue to be at the vanguard when it comes to ambitious and bold green recovery and climate action. And there are other tectonic shifts that will fundamentally alter the way we live. New and emergent technologies, like artificial intelligence, like quantum computing, are racing ahead, leaving many of us behind. We have to make sure that our human-centric approach applies online and offline. New technologies are no new frontier 
where human rights do not exist. We need to define clear red lines where we, as humankind, are not willing and not ready to cross. This includes stepping back from creating killing machines, lethal autonomous weapon system, systems where an algorithm decides in a split second who lives and who dies. Last week, Austria organized a conference to ensure meaningful human control over these weapons. Together with partner countries and civil society, we hope to establish a process leading to a ban of these killer robots. And Austria will continue to be a driving force for disarmament and arms control. We cannot increase our security by increasing our potential to destroy. And most of all, by hanging on to the myth of nuclear deterrence. We need to eliminate these horrendous weapons of mass destruction. Their prohibition is a first step. And we in Austria look forward to hosting the first meeting of state parties to the treaty prohibiting nuclear weapons coming March in Vienna. Ladies and gentlemen, no nation state can shoulder today's and tomorrow's challenges on its own. We need neighbors. We need partners. We need strong multilateral institutions. And Austria, therefore, strongly supports the vision of the Secretary General for UN 2.0. Our multilateral system, conceived in the 20th century, needs to be made fit for the 21st century. Let us not get dragged down by bureaucratic inertia. Let us be bold. Let us be daring. As a medium-sized country, Austria knows the value of a strong United Nations. We know that our own security depends on the rule of law instead of the law of the jungle. And the rule of law will be at the center of our efforts when elected to the Security Council for the term 2027-28. Ladies and gentlemen, when I met with the President of the General Assembly in Vienna recently, he told me that the guiding light for his presidency is hope. And I believe no maxim could be more fitting for our times. It reminded me of something Winston Churchill once said, all the greatest things are simple, and many can be expressed in a single word. So, as we face the challenges ahead, here are some of the words I would wish to guide us in our work. Tolerance, trust, solidarity, truth, justice, compassion, humility, and hope. Thank you. I thank the Federal Minister for European and International Affairs of Austria for his statement.